Good morning. I'm uh, Mike Mazzalongo for BibleTalk.tv, and this is your Monday morning uh, devotional. A bit of spiritual nourishment to get your week off on a good start. Well, first of all, I want you to think of one virtue that more than any other leads to happiness, and why. As for me, I believe that gratitude most often leads to happiness and ingratitude leads to pride and darkness and ultimately separation from God. Paul the Apostle makes this very point in Romans chapter 1 verses uh, 21 to 23. He says, For even though they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks, but they became futile in their speculations and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the incorruptible God for an image in the form of corruptible man and of birds and four-footed animals and crawling creatures. Here, Paul notes that ingratitude is the first sin, first weakness, first failing or lack of wisdom that eventually leads to the rest. It is the tipping point where you trip into the rest of sin. It is as if gratitude propels you towards God and lack of gratitude drives you away. It is the thing or the action or the lever that you control that makes you move in one direction or the other. Gratitude helps you deal properly with the good and the bad in life. Paul also writes in Philippians chapter 4, verses 10 to 13, But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly, that now at last you have revived your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned before, but you lacked opportunity. Not that I speak from want, for I have learned to be content in whatever circumstances I am. I know how to get along with humble means, and I also know how to live in prosperity. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of being filled and going hungry, both having abundance and suffering need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Paul was content, meaning he was happy, he was satisfied uh, in prosperity and in want. Why? Well, he was happy because he was grateful for what God provided in every circumstance. His happiness was based on his closeness and his confidence in God, continually made possible by his gratitude, and not how much he had or did not have. His happiness was not based on how well his life was going or how successful his ministry was. After all, he was in prison when he wrote the letter to the uh, Philippians. His happiness was directly related to his personal relationship with God, and that relationship was a close one because Paul continually gave thanks for everything in his life, great, small, hard, and easy. So, let us give thanks for this food, for this day, for this family, and everything else in our lives, so that through grateful hearts, we may grow closer and closer to God who promises us eternal happiness and joy in Christ. Again, as Paul says in Ephesians 5, 15 to 20, therefore be careful how you walk, not as unwise men, but as wise, making the most of your time because the days are evil. So then do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is and do not get drunk with wine for that is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody with your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks for all things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to God, even the Father. Well, that's it for this Monday. I hope that you have a blessed week and we'll see you again next Monday, Lord willing. Discussion questions. Number one. What one event, person, or attitude leads you to personal unhappiness, and why? Question number two. How would the ideas in this lesson help you if applied? Question number three. Name three things or people or events in your life that bring you happiness today. Give thanks for these.